children with HIV in rich countries. Why? Because every pregnant woman with HIV are treated by antiretroviral. And when a pregnant woman with HIV is treated, the newborn is not infected. We don't know why, but it's like that. And if you are the CEO of a pharmaceutical company, and if your colleague said to you, we have to develop drugs for children, you are going to say no, because you don't have market. You don't, you don't have children in rich countries with HIV. You don't have a market. But you forget that more than 1,000 children with HIV are born each day in the world, 98% in Africa. And thanks to this small idea, this small <laughs> levy tax on plane ticket, we developed um, drugs for children. And when you see Jennifer at the admission three months after the first treatment and five months after, you know, you, you, you believe in this mechanism. Now, I am proud to say to you that eight out of 10 children on therapy in the world against HIV are with the United Funds. Eight out of 10 with one euro by plane ticket in 14 countries. But because we have a sustainable and a predictable finance, as Michel Temer said this morning, we can say to the pharmaceutical company, I am going to buy $400 million a year for 10 years, but I want a reduction of the price. And we obtain a reduction by 50% of the price of antiretroviral. With the same money, we can have two times more patients. So, um, yes, now, you know, if you, you see that, we develop we develop um, a, a new system for pregnant women with HIV. If a pregnant woman with HIV is treated, you have less than 5% to have a, a, a child in Africa with HIV. If this woman is not treated, it is about 40 or 50% of chance. And now I developed a mother baby pack. It's a very small pack that we can give to the mother at the, at the 16th week of the, um, of the pregnancy. And the blue one, because this woman uh, don't know read, you know, it's a color. The blue one is for pregnancy, the yellow is during delivery, and the pink is for baby and the mother after the delivery. With that, we can have, you know, a generation without HIV. But this mother baby pack cost 70 US dollars. With 100 million dollars, you can have a generation without AIDS. And nobody moves. It's a shame. So United is only a model. And what has been done with airline tickets could be done tomorrow in other economic sectors directly affected by globalization, mobile telephony, tobacco, internet, financial exchange, and of course, the financial transaction tax. On March 8, 2011, the European Parliament, but I can add the French Parliament and the European Commission voted a text in favor of establishing the FTT, the financial transaction tax, on the European level without having to wait for other countries. The financial transaction tax exists and is now, now used unilaterally in countries like the United Kingdom, Brazil, South Africa, and India. In April 2011, the FTT project received the support of 1,000 economists from over 50 or so countries and was sent an appeal to G20 ministers and I am very proud to say to you that Nicolas Sarkozy is the, the, the chair of the G20 this year, is going the 4th of November to propose a small, 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 a micro uh, levy tax on the financial transaction tax. 
you know, with this uh, small levy tax on, 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 financial ta on financial transaction, we can raise between 100 and 150 billion dollars a year to, um, yes, uh, to um, provide the global public goods for each human being in the planet. Food security, drinking water, health, education, and sanitation. And in conclusion, I want to speak with you about one idea. It's not one idea, it's done, but I think it's very important for you, it's a green economy. Because if you want to ask the developing countries, in particular in Africa, to decrease the pollution, it's not possible for them to buy the new technologies anti-pollution. It was the same thing for health. Because the rules of the intellectual property on patents, a human being living in developing countries must wait between 15 to 20 years before having access to the same drugs on gets in Paris, New York, or uh, in Oslo. It's a, it's a shame of humanity. Uh, why? Because the northern companies and scientists develop the drugs. Because the northern institutions regulate and approve them for human use. Because the northern dominated trade rules. And we have a responsibility to make the global rules which we have created and continue to control work in the interest as well of poor. 10 million people with HIV currently wait for access to medicines. And this is the reason why UNITED proposed a groundbreaking initiative, the creation of a no-profit structure in which patent owners agree to license their patents to enable generic producers to manufacture generics against HIV exclusively for developing countries. It's a revolution. For the first time in the history of the humanity, the sick living in a poor country will have the same drug at the same time as those living in developed countries. It is the future. The history of UNITED proves that innovative financing, particularly a global solidarity contribution on top of ODA, are a vital tool in the fight against epidemics and tomorrow against poverty, hunger, and climate change. Thanks to this financing, we can transform global public goods to universal public goods. If we don't want the global economic crisis to generate into a global humanitarian and social crisis, with unpredictable consequences in political stability and international peace, we need to act collectively and to act now. It's my last slide. The difficulty is what takes a little time and the impossible is what takes a little longer. Thank you.